Hello everyone. Good evening. Hello. Good evening, sir. Okay, so I think how many of you have done both week one and week two now? Okay, okay, how are you finding the course? It's good, you're finding it difficult, easy, any feedback? Sir, course. Sir, am I audible? Yeah, yeah you're audible. Sir, I think course is pretty straightforward. Just like, uh, I mean, just for the assignments, uh, it would be great if you just take one example and give a demo of like what, how we have to submit basically. So like what, what kind of details you're expecting. So because uh, like there are some questions on computing, deriving and uh, getting the C value expression, all of that. So. Mm -hmm. uh, how are you expecting us to like, uh, like, is, does it have to be like, so it has to be in a document. I understand that, but how detailed must it be? Like, it does it have to be like ma'am's notes or something. So if we just go through one example, which you feel is an ideal example, that would be really helpful. Mm, okay. Okay. We will cover that thing. Uh, anything else? Anyone? I mean, I have a another doubt which I posted on Discord. So, would it be the right time to raise it, or should I raise it later? Yeah, you can raise it, sir. So, I mean, if you look at the uh, accept, reject, or I mean, the various algorithms. So, uh, like first we cover uh, pseudo random number generation, right? So, uh, so, over there we first cover how to generate from uniform zero to one. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once we go to accept reject, then we automatically use the built-in runif function, right. uh, as in like in MAMS code. And then after that, again, like even for the proposals and even, so we use stuff like R binom, R G of, or uh, 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 so all of these R and D and all of these functions, which are built in, right? So mm -hmm. when it comes to the uh, submission of our assignments, so when we generate a uniform random number or any of these uh, uh, binomial or geometric proposals, do we can we use the built-in functions like MAM has used, or do we have to uh, do that from scratch as well? That is like my basic question. No, no, no. you can use built-in functions for that, like okay. MAM to the lectures. Yeah. Yeah. So the basically the same way, MAM until unless like uh, we are explicitly asked to use uniform zero one. I think in one of the questions we have to generate it from scratch so over only over there we have to make our own function right, right otherwise right. uh mm -hmm. we can just follow like what ma'am has done in the notes uh for our geom our binom and all that yeah, it's, unif, all of it's on the same so, lines we are expecting yeah. okay okay so, okay yeah, it's like only like if we are asking you to create a function to generating binomial you should not be generating you should not be using our binom to you generate that's all. Yeah, side. but for yeah, so basic. But for the proposal, like if it's geometric or some other variable, yeah. we can use R geom and all that stuff. Right? Yeah, yeah, you can use it. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay. okay. Uh, so yes. for the, the AR uh, uh, problems, uh, do you need the derivation of the maximum value also, or just a formula to calculate it is okay? Uh, for upper bound C, we required you to like compute expression till then. The mm -hmm. maximum value you can compute by creating the function as per the question. Right. So the uh, the mm -hmm. to find the theoretical upper bound, we have to do it analytically, right? Right. Uh, you that is not necessary. Uh, like the yeah. the derivation is not necessary for C, right? Yeah. Uh, we reach at the point, right? That maximum value over this range of x, like whichever value would 
maximize it would be our c right yeah but we compute c for range of values of x so compute expression till that point and after that you can write a function which takes in those values of x compute values of c and returns the maximum value of c uh right but in the first uh, week we have uh, functions that have uh, we have distributions which have infinite support in week 1 right in week 1 yes okay let me share my screen one is a negative binomial and the proposal is geometric so that's why uh, you know i uh, the example that uh, uh, i am took in one of the courses was one of the lectures was simply to enumerate c or basically the ratio of the proposal and the target for whatever is the support but since the support is finite mm -hmm. it's easy to loop over those values and figure out what the max is uh, but if okay. the support is infinite mm -hmm. then how do we do that the only option is to do you know somehow do it analytically okay uh okay this question you are referring right we need yes. to generate some negative binomial with some parameters correct the proposal. second one actually obtain the expression for yeah. c upper bound and yeah. since sorry it to... explicitly obtain the expression go on go on sorry right. to sorry to interrupt but jaydev sir by analytically you mean that some kind of closed form expression right like yes yes so you write oh, the okay. ratio down in the the pmf proposal by pmf target and see what value of the support will maximize that ratio yeah, yeah okay okay got it yeah so uh, even uh, even in mams example she doesn't explicitly take the full ratio right i mean like she just express it expresses it in a form and then she just uses a loop to generate the max right so hmm. uh, and again that is happening because in that particular example both the proposal and the target have a finite or rather even if one of them has a finite uh, so not one of them the target definitely if the target has a finite support then it's easy to do but if the target has infinite support yeah so uh, then it has to be done analytically Hmm. No, I mean there is a hint given, so I just use that hint as a this thing for a proxy for the value. Uh, okay, yeah. Let me go through. So you can see that hint, right? So this hint is for that purpose only. We know that it can take values up to infinity, right? right. But if you compute the probabilities, like right? let's say you are negative binomial with parameters, let's say three and point four, right? Mm hmm. the probability that it will take more than 30 trials is zero so you need not run loop beyond 30 uh, oh, 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 okay. you can go from 3 to 30 only okay okay And, yeah, thanks so, you almost gave that away thank you yeah the logic we have used is you if you have studied in stats too right beyond 3 time beyond mean plus 3 times standard deviation there are on like 99.7% of values lies in between Three sigma range, right? Correct, correct. Uh, except, I mean, the only thing uh, that I mean, this is not rigorous, but it works for this particular. Yeah, it works. Tutorial. Okay. okay. Yeah. So even if you if you are when you are writing the function, right? Hmm. So compute the expected value of x, and for safer side, like c is upper bound, right? So for yeah. safer side, you can take four times sigma. Hmm. The so chances of that your number of trials will exceed expected value of x plus four sigma is zero percent. It's 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 very very close to zero, but it's not really zero. Right? But okay, your point is taken. Yeah, it will become zero. Let me show you. A negative binomial never becomes zero. Right? Me show you. Okay, let's say we have R S three P S point four, right? Mm hmm. So this is the graph. See, um, let's say if I plug in value twenty nine, there are still some chances, right? Yeah, like for plugin thirty one, it's touching very zero, like it's mm. zero, almost zero. So there are no chance we are going to generate that value. Fair enough. Uh, sir, uh, sir, in this question, mm -hmm. like I just use the e plus three x this thing, so I didn't use thirty as a number. I just calculated e plus three x and then, I mean sorry, yeah, e x yeah. and plus three sigma. So yeah. which one should we use, like thirty uh, or the previous? No, no, thirty you can't use right directly because you are creating a general function over here to generate the value of c, right? Okay. And you need. Yeah. So for the fifth one, should we just uh, 
like uh, for yeah so for that general value of c so when we are calculating that c value so mm -hmm. over there we'll be assuming that uh, this ex plus 3 sigma right take 4 sigma because exceeding 3 sigma there are still some 0.03% chances okay so we take should change it to 4 4 sigma is for a safer side because we need only upper bound right we will cover the complete range till 4 sigma it won't exceed more than that yeah i because mean i was getting more or less close values okay. okay yeah take 4 sigma because it can still exceed 3 sigma but chances are very less safer side take 4 sigma 5 sigma that would be enough Oh, okay, sir. Okay, can, can I just sorry? Uh, where, uh, I'm not sure I understood it completely. What Arya is saying is instead of hard coding that value of 30 iterations and then finding the max, mm -hmm. uh, find the theoretical mean, add three times or four times uh, the sigma, mm -hmm. and whatever is the support or, or whatever is the value of k there, you do up till only that instead of specifying 30 or any specific number. Right. Anyway, to compute c, you need to write this general function, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you also need to input C as a parameter. So you will be using this function in part three. You will call that function values this three and point four, right? Which will give you the value of C as the parameter. R is point R is three, P is point four, and then you will run this function to generate samples. Important. To get this parameter value, you need to run this function in part three. So it is a general function. As soon as you give it the parameter R and P, right? You should yeah. give them a parameter R and P. It will compute the value of C and the possible range of X, which it will check is from R to expected value of X plus let's say four sigma for safer side. Because it won't exceed four sigma. So, sir, uh, so there is this, uh... Sir, uh, Jaydev, sir, are you done? Like, I mean, yes, yes, please go. On. Yeah, okay. So, sir, my, my query was like, uh, uh, so there is this recurring theme of approximately equal, right? So, is there like a threshold, like a good threshold that this is acceptable or not? Uh, can you repeat your question once? So, yeah. so uh, if you look at the sixth part, it is saying that you have to check whether it is approximately equal to the theoretical mean, right? So, yeah. uh, so usually like uh, when we do some kind of proving or something like epsilon delta or something, so mm -hmm. uh, we, we put a threshold value, right, for that epsilon. So mm -hmm. that if it falls within that epsilon, so we can say that it is approximately equal, otherwise it's not. So uh, mm -hmm. is, is there something like that for these assignment questions or? It's just a broad understanding of things. So, uh, it is just to verify that your sample is drawn correctly, right? If your theoretical mean is, let's say, five point five, you should expect your sam sample mean should be close to that five point five only, right? It should be. Yeah, like but how do we define that close closeness value? Like, is there a numeric threshold uh, there is, for that? Or? No, no, there is no numerical threshold. It just should be approximately equal. Like if it's 5.5, .5, you can expect it to be in between 5.2 to 5.8. Because okay. there are 1,000 samples here. Okay, sir. Okay. okay. You can also maybe do something like uh, if it's, you calculate whatever is, uh, for whatever number of samples it's asked in the question, calculate that. Try to increase it and see if it gets closer. That might be a, at least unambiguous. Yeah, but don't increase the number of samples. Right? Here, just uh, generate 1,000 samples and do that for this. Ah, I mean, we can just add a comment that I yeah. did run this with 10,000 samples and it got closer, so this is... Yeah, yeah. yes. I mean, we don't have to leave it in the PDF. Mm -hmm. Just as a comment, we can mention that. Way. Yeah. Also, uh, one thing I wanted to clarify. Yeah. Uh, so question three and question four. Uh, so, like you were saying, right? Uh, you cannot input uh, a hard coded value, but uh, uh, question four has the same distributions, right? Like it uses the geometric and the negative binomial distribution. Right. So, so the value that we get over here will be this, the same as if we had hard coded, right? Like, am I? making a sense but what i'm meant to ask was that uh, question three gives the value of c right right 
and it uses both distributions right mm -hmm. correct so and question 4 also uses the same distributions right mm -hmm. so if i hard code over in like as a 30 value in 3 the answer for 4 will be the same because we are not passing any function a uh, parameter for the uh, distribution right we are only passing uh, variables like r p and c which are which are nothing to do with the distribution in the sense no i think uh, that is exactly what has to do with the distribution no no in the sense uh, like creating the distribution right mm -hmm. uh okay so you are saying you will uh okay you will hard in while generating the value of c you will hard code x to not exceed 30 is it like that yeah, if i take 30 mm -hmm. so uh i will get the max value right right Uh, because it's a probability distribution of uh, say x is equal to aj upon probability probability of y is equal to aj okay yeah is equal to c right that is the formula so i get c from there and uh, these both distributions are one is the geometric distribution and the other is the negative binomial distribution right so i am using the same thing uh, below right uh, in the four okay uh okay uh so in the fourth uh, how are you getting this value of c from above right from third part right yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> okay uh okay so you are saying if you okay so what you are trying to say is you are not using this expected value of x plus 3 times sigma instead you will hard code it that it will not exceed 30 and you will check in that range whichever value maximum you are getting something correct like correct yeah correct matlab yeah. i think uh, uh, the expectation and this uh, came around to 30 only right mm -hmm. so but what if we change the value of r and p it won't work right yeah yeah the maximum c will always depend on whatever is the parameter of the distribution if i increase r to 30 then it the function will not work okay so you are saying sir you are we have to call the function in the fourth part hmm. get value c right okay got okay hmm. right because uh, you are creating a function right and while evaluating we can plug in any values it's need not be this 3 and point 4 we can plug in any values and for the evaluation in your function uh, correct but uh, the distributions have to be the same yeah distributions are to be the same yeah, yeah. okay got Okay. Uh, I mean, we are not creating a function that creates uh, a negative binomial distribution exactly for r equal to three and p equal to point four. It can be anything. I mean, it has mm -hmm. to be general. Yeah, yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. correct. So that that was a useful question. Okay. Uh, anything else, Anila? Mm, sir, as I requested earlier, like as an example, mm -hmm. can we? do like this week to self assessment is there right yeah. so from there there is the third uh, the so there is the third question which i am anyways like i was a bit not sure because it looks like beta distribution so that would be like uh, i mean we would get an idea of how to submit like exactly what you are expecting and also mm -hmm. like uh, it would also help me like get the concept better so if we do the self help a week to third question this beta one yes like which is on the screen so mm -hmm. like uh, as in like we have to compute the values etc etc so uh, how do you expect us to answer those questions it okay uh, uh, okay so here your target distribution is beta distribution right with parameter a and b uh, yes sir yeah and proposal we are keeping uniform minus 1 to 1 so here again you need to write a function to generate the value of c right yes you can sir. write a like you need not write the function you can directly write the code and do it but it's better if you write the function so yeah so in this you need to just add the snippet of you can add the snippet of your function and along with the value of c you have obtained for that okay and then 
in the next part you can add the snippet of uh, density curves which you have obtained and uh, in like in, in the lecture ma'am has explained right which region would have high chances of acceptance and which will have less chances of being accepted right yes so, yes so these need not be the exact values these are just based on visualization your answer could be approximately true like it should not be exactly 0.5 it can be 0 0.4 0 0.6 right so but like my query is like even if you look at the first question mm -hmm. without concrete values of a and b how will we arrive at the value of c like i don't think we can do that right without yeah write a function for it no? later on when we plug in a2 and b3 you can generate it okay uh, okay okay uh, same same logic as in previous assignment right 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 c depends on rmp okay. for negative binomial right okay, here okay. maybe then here you will write a function to generate a sample which will use the values of your parameters a and b along with your upper bound value c which you will for c you will call this function created in part one yes sir and for the pdf we will just uh, paste the code snippet right yeah, just part. paste the code snippet and yeah whatever plots output you try to add it like here you are generating thousand samples right you will need not to show all the thousand just print first and then show in the snippet okay so wherever if we are asked for generating samples so then we have to somehow show some of the first few samples okay. yeah just show yeah first five ten samples would be good enough to do okay and yeah for this expected value and theoretical equivalence yeah you can directly show it like theoretical you can compute by plugging in formula directly right calculation part you can do in r if you want and empirical would be your just the mean of the sam thousand samples which you have generated. So the mean command okay. you can plug in and show your output and add the snippet of that. And then you can comment on the obtained values that these are approximately equal. Yes, sir, I didn't get the last part, like comment on the, I mean, as okay, okay. So as in like the theoretical and actual mean are equal. more or less equal. Okay, yeah, okay. In short, yeah. So, so, and if we just go to the second question, uh, not second, uh, I think, yeah, yeah. Let's take second question. So over here, uh, there's zero inflated uh, mm -hmm. binomial, right? right? Yeah. So uh, we have to write the distribution, right? So uh, if you look at the nodes, so ma'am has like uh, written the distribution. If I <laughs> so like uh, if you look at the zero inflated poison that which ma'am has taken, so she has like deliberately written the curly braces and written the di distribution. So when we are expected to uh, give the PDF submission. So if we get a question like this, so then we have to describe it in that manner. Am yeah. I correct? Yeah, yeah, just write the distribution. You can write it in any way. But yeah, okay. And it should be properly presented. Okay. And for the second part, if we look at obtain the expression. Hmm. So I got, so I derived it on my notebook. So it was like one minus delta into NP, right? So um point is that uh, do i have to uh whatever i wrote down in the notebook so sh should i also type it out or is it okay if i just put a photo of my notebook derivation which i have handed also in? you can put in yeah. if okay, it's so readable it's not, yeah okay hmm. yeah so if i do write in a clean and readable for format in pen paper i can take a photo of it and put it uh as the for the yeah. second part right yeah, yeah you can add the photo as a part of your pdf for that part okay sir so it's not necessary for the second part to uh, actually go down to word doc or latex or something and write oh, the yeah, yeah. animation yeah, it's not like that. yeah okay sir okay yeah so for the questions which have like uh, uh, you know specific output like first few samples and last few samples should we be setting some sort of seed at the beginning and like is there a convention we should follow throughout the course Ah, it's up to you. If you want to put in seed, put it. Like it would be better if you put in seed, right? Because we will be able to verify easily. Uh, no, no, yes, but I'm 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 talking from the grading uh, perspective because like everybody's first and last ten elements may not be the same. Even if the even if say the whole thing is deterministic, mm -hmm. like the first thing we start with is a uniform drop, right? Right. Which could be random, which right. which is obviously random, and mm -hmm. uh, based on that. Uh, we do a lot of things to come up with the target sample. Right. So mm -hmm. uh, 
everybody will have different uh, first ten and last ten samples. Let's say. Right. Mm-hmm. So would it? I mean, you you're not expecting anything like a seed which makes everything every solution appear equal, right? Ah, uh, yeah. We are not expecting all of you to have the same solution. Uh. But it would be good if your code is reproducible. Like you said, okay, see okay. as some random value. Okay, great, great. That that was useful. Yeah. So so for that, like we just add a line like set dot seed some value at the top of the code, right? That is yeah. enough, right? Yeah, that is enough. It will work for all the questions. So set seed. Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Anything else? Anyone? Uh, yeah, I mean, even like, uh, even if you look at uh, GA one or like even self assessment, so there were these questions like which of the following distributions can be used as a proposal, right? So, uh, oh, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this first part. So for this, how much uh, like you written explain the answer? So. Like how much details uh, should we go? Because like I think one or two principles that Ma'am has covered is if the support is not enough or yeah, basically that is like one of the main criteria, right? Yeah, that's the or, main. yeah. one so, or two. So, yeah, yeah, continue. Sorry. Yeah. So I mean, I'm no, I I mean you were answering anyway. So my question was that how much for each of the options? Like should we just mention this is possible or this is not possible because the support or something is there within the region or not? Okay. Uh, okay. So you can kind of generalize it a bit. Like for this question, okay, it's the grid. I think we have one in self evaluation also, right? Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. So here we have binomial distribution, right? Ah. Uh, so. Yeah. But- yes, sir. One thing which you can do is like you can write the support for all of them, right? For binomial, it's zero one only, right? For geometric, it goes from zero to infinity. For negative binomial, it's again R to some infinity, and similarly for hypergeometric, we have some. So you like you can select one, right? So here, I think for binomial, we can go for geometric, right? Oh uh, okay. yes, sir. You can go for geometric, Actually, and you can give the reason, right? Of the support. Yeah, I think uh, someone raised on discourse. Like, I think there are various ways to define negative binomial as well. Mm-hmm. But then uh, I think uh, Nikita Mama someone replied that please take the ones that are used in stats two or something. So mm-hmm. that yeah. is like a general uh, advice, right? Like wherever there are like any definitions that we have to consider for distribution. So we just refer to stats two definition, right? Yeah, because as per our intuition, you have completed those courses, so you are aware of whatever taught in that course only. We are not expecting you to come up with some new form for that distribution. Okay, sir. Yeah, for geometric, there are two forms, I think. So generally, we mention which forms we are mentioning. For geometric, both the forms were covered in stats too. Yeah, yeah. Negative binomial also like someone put a snapshot of uh, on Wikipedia, but I think mm-hmm. it can be in terms of failures, in terms of success, in terms of trials. Actually, both of them are equivalent. Yeah, answer would be the same anyway. You just get different function, like different expression. No, but the support, such the support changes then. So then, uh, so if even if I look at Wikipedia, so then if I take it a different variation, then the support changes. Okay, support changes. Yeah, I'll just put the link so you can have a look. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I'll put the link on the chat. Like, right? so they've considered various cases. So I put the link on the chat, sir. So uh, for from Wikipedia. So mm-hmm. they've considered if you just scroll down. So there's a small table which was the snippet that the person had put on the on dispose. Yeah, right? support so, changes, but then correspondingly in the proposal also it will change, right? Because and and that should ultimately produce the same result. Okay, I didn't think about that. I think yeah, that is a valid point. Because uh, let's say if support uh, for what we've been taught earlier is n trials k failures. 
but somebody else right. uh, writes it as m successes and k failures then correspondingly the and, and let's say that i'm using geometric as proposal then that support will also change i'll have to do n plus k and minus k something over there hmm okay which should cancel out hopefully hmm. okay okay yeah uh, that's nice uh, anything else anyone uh, so i just wanted to know like i know like the quiz is a little like it's in july but uh, uh, what will be the format of uh, like the question paper will it be similar to what we are doing right now or will it will it be like Uh, MCQ objective type. Uh, quiz one, we are expecting it to be objective type. It's not confirmed yet. We will confirm by next session hopefully. But yeah, we are expecting quiz one to be objective. Okay. Because you won't be having our studio over there to go. So just to clarify, by objective you mean it will be a computer based exam, right, and not a pen and paper written exam. Yeah, MCQ. MCQ and MSQ. Okay. Okay, so, so actually, the it could be pen and paper based also. There are some courses where the paper itself is objective, but you still have to write on paper. So is that going to happen? Yeah, from quiz two for quiz two and end term, you will have pen and paper exam for sure. Anywhere in either of the quizzes or uh, the end term, mm -hmm. uh, is there going to be a situation where we have to remember PDFs like formulas? Some uh, of them is okay, but like not. No, no. We generally provide with the cheat sheets. Okay. Just that. like stats too. Yeah. Yeah, just like stats too. That that would be great. Great. Yeah. So, as the things get finalized, we will keep you informing. But for now, quiz one, it's gonna be normal objective types for now. If it changes, we will inform you by next session. Uh, sorry, sir, I missed it. So you were saying that, uh, like, starts to we will be given the different distributions, PDF, CDF, and mean variance, all of that, right? Yeah, it depends. Yeah, it depends. We need to we need confirmation from the prof for it. But yeah, most most probably we will get it. Okay, I mean, if we are not getting, is it possible we know it a bit in advance because yeah, memorizing yeah. it would. Yeah, okay. by next session you we will confirm. It. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, you uh, might may I ask a yeah. question here? Yeah. Sir, how you are going to evaluate the pen and paper exam for this course? It's gonna be evaluated by instructors only. Uh, okay, sir. Okay. And yeah, so uh, you might be thinking that uh, in the graded assignment you are getting this coding and completely subjective questions. So, uh, how is gonna be the objective one? So. Whatever outputs you are getting over there, right? Observe closely, observe the pattern, uh, observe the inferences you can draw from the outputs because objective can be based only on that. So, sir, most probably we need to upload the solved papers, solved mm -hmm. questions, na, right? Right. Okay, so yeah, but whatever output you are getting, also try to observe it and see what inferences, what it means actually. Uh, okay. Anyone, anything else? Uh, yeah, excuse yeah. me, sir. Yeah. Um, I had actually I dropped off a few minutes ago. I raised a question in the chat box. Have you already answered that, or should I repeat it? I haven't checked it. Can you repeat? Okay, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll just repeat. So uh, basically, my question was about whether or not the graded assignment should be auto graded or will it be graded manually? Uh -huh. So if it is auto graded, then like Arya said, a sample submission would be helpful because we'll we'll like that will set some standards which we'll follow. Ah uh, no, it would be manually graded. But just okay. Uh, keep your functions correctly because we will just plug in some random values, run your function, and check it. Okay. Okay. No, I mean, yeah. Those those functions are fine. So, uh, for, I was I was more or less concerned about the formatting of the other files. So, for example, details dot txt. Does it need to follow a specific format for name and roll number or something like that? I mean, if 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 it were to be auto graded, then we we would have needed to follow a certain format. 
Oh, no, no, just keep it. It's manually graded. Just write name in your like name colon your name in the first line and yeah, yeah, okay. roll number colon your roll number in the second line. That's it. And uh, so I, go ahead. Yeah, Charles, go ahead. Charles, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, sure. uh, so one more thing. Uh, will you be releasing the solution for the gradient? Yeah, yeah, after the deadline, we will release it. You will release it. Once we will. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, just a couple of more questions. Uh, you responded to one of Jade's questions in the discourse forum, saying that uh, you like. I think he asked about submission of a R R notebook, uh, yeah. and you said you can submit a PDF version of it. I mean, is it is it possible? We, can we submit a notebook instead? I mean, or does it have to be a PDF output from that notebook? Uh, yeah. See, the files you are submitting should be .dot PDF format only. Okay. So you okay. are generating it using Jupyter Notebook Collab. It doesn't matter. It should be PDF at the end of the day. Okay, got it. And uh, the self-evaluation assignments, right. uh, do they do they carry any bonus marks or uh, they are just there for the practice? I mean, are there any marks associated with those assignments in any form? For now, no. But we might like we will see by the end of the course. So we encourage you to do do it for now. For now, there is no such official bonus marking for them. So, but but this, are you saying that this might change by the end of the course? Yeah, so if we have not done course, it now, we might by, see that it depends. Uh, for those who need, okay. we might give, but yeah, something like that. Okay, okay, got it. And uh, regarding the live session timings, I just before joining in the session, I saw someone had asked about uh, delay if that could be possible. Uh, so I uh, I'm also requesting for the same. Instead of starting at 6 p.m., if if possible, can we start at 7:30, 7, 7 p.m. or later? That that would be helpful. Yeah, if it's yeah, I asked others to also respond to that thread. So is it like everyone having issue with this timing and this day? Shall we move it to Saturday or delay it on Friday? Anything? I mean, if if it is fixed for every Friday, I don't have any issues as long as it is consistent. But uh, the time, like if if it starts with a another maybe another hour or so delay, maybe if it starts at seven or seven thirty, that would be helpful. I don't have any issue with Fridays as such. Okay. Okay. What about others? Uh, yeah, yeah. After seven, will be okay, sir. Because we have to come to from the office to home. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. six is a bit too early. Uh -huh. Too early. I'm okay. in the middle of the road <laughs> listening it. Okay, okay. We will move it to seven seven PM. Okay. Seven or seven thirty. Okay. We will move it from next time. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, one more uh, question sir? regarding that this grid. Uh, uh, so I was yeah. just asking that there are some questions where it is written that uh, write a function. So over there so we are writing functions, but there are some wherein it just uh, said that write a code to generate thousand samples or something. So over there, if we use a function, as in like a function to generate samples and then call it. So is that acceptable or does it have to strictly be some kind of non-functional code? Uh, that is uh, my okay. query. In graded assignment, we have restricted you to write a function and call it. But for self-evaluation, you can do it either way. Whatever. No, no, I was asking the other way around, as in like, there are places where it is written that just write a code to generate thousand samples. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, I, if I write a generic function that takes in the number of samples and the uh, various parameters, and then it internally calls generate the one sample function, and then it returns some kind of a list uh, which will give me the values that it generated. So uh, is that okay? Like, uh, so if I generate it via a function instead of just like procedural code. So, oh. okay, okay, okay. Let me clarify if I'm not wrong. What you are mentioning is, uh, okay. So for this, you are saying you will instead of writing a code to generate one sample, you will write code that directly generate thousand samples. No, no. I'm not talking about this part. I'm talking about the fifth part, for example. Okay. Like generate thousand samples using hmm. the above ones. Yeah. So there is no, uh, and even like I mean, I think in even other places like. Just uh, it's mentioned that write code to generate thousand samples or something like that. Okay, so my question is that if I do that, so if if I do the fifth part inside a function and then call that function, will that be okay or uh, do I have to specifically write it as a procedural line of code uh, 
uh, outside a function. Ah, okay, okay, yeah. So that will be okay, but make sure you do do not violate this. That your this function should take only parameter R, P, and C, right? And whenever yeah, yeah, you're yeah. creating thousand sample, you should definitely be using the above created function. As yeah, yeah, yeah. So fifth, fifth part is like I can create a general function which takes n as a parameter for the number of samples. and internally it calls the fourth part to generate one sample for each of the n values yeah and then it returns an uh, array of the 1000 samples yeah, or the yeah. n samples yeah, so yeah. that is fine right yeah. yeah that's fine okay yeah so whatever conditions are mentioned in the question that should be met you can code it either way you are free to do that okay sir so sir one question regarding this gradient okay so when we are writing the answer You mm -hmm. no need to write the code in the PDF, right? So we'll just going to write answer like the question number one, subsection one. Then answer at print screen we have to put, right? Yeah, it would Or be better if you add the snippet of it, snippet of the function you have written. Okay, so uh, like, first put the snippet, then what is the output, and uh, so on. Yeah, yeah. Like here you are generating thousand samples, right? So mm -hmm. just print first five or ten samples and add the snippet of it. Okay. Along with the code, yeah. Okay. Thank. You. Okay. Uh, anything else, Anima? Yeah. Um, just one last doubt. I noticed this right now. Okay. Um, the self evaluation assignments. Uh, I'm not seeing whether I don't think they are mentioning any specific submission format. Um, uh, yeah. Will they be evaluated, and how do we submit those? Self evaluation assignments are to be evaluated by. You yourself only. It won't be evaluated by us. It's for just the practice. So, but do okay. submit it. If you are doing it, do submit it. Submit you only the source code file would be enough. Okay, but I mean, uh, okay, so it's just a submission to the portal, but there is no uh, the I mean no evaluation as such. Yeah, no evaluation as such. Yeah, but if you are doing it, do submit your co source code file over there. So, okay. Yeah. Sure. Sure. So basically, we have to submit the R dot R file if if we are submitting anything. That, yeah. That's all. Yeah. yeah. Because we okay. would also know that you are doing and how much you are progressing in R and all that. So you know. Right. Yeah. Right. So do it if you are doing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Got it. Understood. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Just, Or if you want, you can also follow the graded assignment pattern as discussed earlier. Okay. Okay. Anything? Anyone else? We shall be close for today. Uh, yes, I don't have any more queries. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Thanks sir. Thanks for thank the session. You. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, thank you sir yeah thank you bye bye